what is going on people's g and we are back in the building yes we're here for the liverpool versus manchester city preview it is the big one Klopp versus Pep, the last dance, whatever it is you want to call it, the title decider, some people are calling it here, but of course, as we already know, nothing gets decided at this moment in time, we still have to wait, of course, till the Till, till the points are confirmed. We still have to wait until the points are confirmed, and then we will be able to see what is going on, but it's an absolutely monumental game. Uh, two of the biggest clubs in the Premier League, especially over this last 10 years, you know, both have obviously shared, I don't want to say shared, but, you know, both teams have won the title within the last five to 10 years, um, especially since Jurgen Klopp has been at Liverpool. Both teams have shared quite a lot of success in the last few years. So it's going to be a crazy game. It's going to be a crazy game. Um, we're going to go through just a little bit of news. Of course, I'm recording this on Friday. So Jurgen Klopp's press conference has not come out yet. So of course, I don't know if there's any changes over the course of the weekend, players who are fit. So I'm just going to base this on everything that I know up until the 8th of March. So things may potentially change over the next few days. So apologies if so. But let me know, guys, as we go through, you know, today's preview, let me know um, anything that you guys, you know, would change about my predicted lineup. You know, let me know if there's anything you don't like about my predicted lineup, you know, players who may play, players who should play, you know, the threats of Manchester City, all of that we are going to go through in today's preview. So stay tuned. Oh, guys, we're here, man. We're here. You know, biggest game of the season. Um, I would say for both teams, if I'm being totally honest. I, I feel like this is a big game, you know, for both teams, you know, both fighting for that Premier League title. Will Manchester City make this four in a row, which has never been done in the Premier League era? I don't know if it's even been. No, I think it has been potentially done. Potentially, I'm not 100% sure on that. But either way, in the Premier League era, that's never been done. Manchester United, as we know, have won three in a row twice in the Premier League era. That kind of tells you the dominance that they kind of had, you know, over English football. Manchester City are, are, of course, currently on three titles at this current moment in time, coming off the back of a treble. You know, Liverpool coming off the back of their worst season, probably under Jurgen Klopp. Um, you know, and there's so many narratives, you know, around not even just this game, but just the the title in itself. You know, when we think about it, you know, you've got Liverpool, you know, Klopp's last season, you know, the the, the last swan song, you know, of, you know, can Jurgen Klopp finally win another title with Liverpool or will he end his time here only with one Premier League title? Does that change the view? You know, I, I know most fans, most Liverpool fans probably won't see it that way, but, you know, some <clears throat> will definitely see it. Um, We'll see a little bit differently. You've got, you know, Pep Guardiola, as I mentioned before, winning four titles in a row. That will be absolutely crazy. And, you know, will kind of just show and assert that dominance that he's currently had, if I'm being honest, over the last decade, you know, the, the dominance that he's had here. Then you've got Arsenal as well. You know, we can't forget about Arsenal. I know Arsenal playing, I think, Brentford um, It is this weekend. So we know that they've got a tough game 
um, a tough fixture, should I say, within that. And, you know, it's been 20 years since they lifted the Premier League title, haven't really won much, you know, since that time as well. A few FA Cups dotted around, you know, here and there. But outside of that, you know, they've been quite poor. You know, Europa League finishes here and, you know, only just now getting back into the Champions League. And, you know, so it'll be monumental, and especially Mikel Arteta, you know, his first managerial job. This will be crazy for him, you know, to be able to get that title, especially with some of the players that they've got, you know, players coming through, the Martinelli, the you know the sackers the Gabriel Jesus obviously signing from uh, from Manchester City coincidentally Declan Rice coming in in the summer big money signing can he obviously get his hands on the Premier League title you know there's there's just so many narratives man there's so many narratives and I think with a game like this you know there's to be honest there's a lot to unpack in a general sense but if we're just looking at on the face of it You've got the two teams, you know, they're obviously Liverpool and Manchester City. And before I, of course, before I even continue, guys, please make sure you, you're tuned in. Hopefully you like the content. Hopefully you like some of the stuff that I've been saying. Please make sure you just smash a like. That's all I ever asked for. Just smash the like button for me. That, that's it. You know, subscribe if you want to subscribe. I'm not even going to put pressure on you guys, you know, to subscribe. But if you could do that, that would be absolutely uh, amazing. So hopefully you guys can, yes, you guys can obviously see it up here. You've got the Premier League table. As I mentioned before, I am doing this on the Friday, the 8th of March. So, of course, this is going to be before all of the press conferences and things like that. But I think it's more fun this way. You know what I mean? I think it's I think it's better this way. And I haven't got time. <laughs> but as you can see, Liverpool, Manchester City, the top two in the Premier League, they are only separated by one point. If you look at the form, Manchester City, of course, in better form. If you look at it over the last five games, Liverpool ha do have that defeat within that time. Um, but Manchester City have obviously got that draw. But in terms of points, what's that? 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 3, 6, 9, 12. So again, one point separates them in terms of form, but at the same time, one point then separates them in terms of the table with Liverpool, of course, being top of that list. And as I mentioned before, cannot forget Arsenal. Don't want to do that. If they win their game against Brentford, they will go top uh, momentarily, hopefully momentarily. In fact, I hope they lose actually. But if they were to win the game, then, of course, they will go top of the league. So, yeah, there, there, there is a lot riding on this game. It's not even trying to pretend otherwise um, in that kind of sense. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and lie. For me, I think if a Manchester City were to win the game, um, then I think they will just go on and do their thing. They will move, of course, you know, just in front of Liverpool there by one point. So, oh, sorry, by, by two points, should I say. So, you know, again, not there's not it's not a gap and of course they still have to make sure that they do their job and we still have to just keep on winning but it's difficult chasing Manchester City man honestly you know when they get into gear when they get into their stride they can become a very difficult team to catch as they've proven over the last three seasons in fact over the last since Pep Guardiola came here they've proven that you know over time and then obviously if Liverpool were to win I think with the momentum that they've got at the moment you know they're they're getting through games. I say getting through games. It's funny. Like, I think I said this on my match reaction uh, for the Sparta Prague game. You, we won 5 1. You know, so you look at it and you think, well, we won 5 1. You know what I mean? And we smashed them. You know what I mean? The quality in the end, it just it was, it was too much um, for them. But I don't know. I just feel like when I watch Liverpool, when I watch Manchester City, when I watch Arsenal, it's all different. And again, as I mentioned in, in that stream, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there's not there's just this one way that you must do things and you have to do things like this and et cetera, et cetera. No, there's other ways to do it. But it's, it, yeah, Liverpool's way is just the, yeah, it's just different. It's just different. I think that's obviously the best way to kind of put it. But as I mentioned before, let's of course just wait and see first, you know, kind of what happens and, you know, literally just kind of go with it from there. But prior to this game, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who has, as some people have mentioned, rattled the Manchester City fan base um, to come out, uh, uh, I think it was, it was in an interview. I just saw like a few quotes and stuff like that. Um, I think in an interview that he'd done earlier on um, talking about Manchester City. And before I even put up the quotes and stuff that he did say, he he, what, he did talk about them in a good light as well. You know, he, he, he does mention, <clears throat> you know, in terms of their success and in terms of <clears throat> how good of a team that they are, excuse me, in terms of how good of a team that they are, you know, he does mention that, you know, so, but again, we know how the media work, we know how the media kind of stay, and of course, they only picked out, you know, these kind of comments, you know, from Trent Alexander-Arnold, and 
Here he says, although Manchester City have won more titles than us, our trophies will mean more to us and our fan base because of the situations at the club. How both clubs have built their teams and the manner in which we've done it probably means more to our fans. Now, you guys, you've been you you've been rocking with me, and again, big up everybody who's helped me to achieve that thousand subscribers. Um, love and blessings to each and every one of you, first and foremost. Um, and hopefully, we can keep rocking until we get to a million subscribers. But you know how I stay, and you know how I am about this winning and losing. And context, of course, has to be applied to everything as well. You know, it's not just the, necessarily about the winning and losing, but you know, him Trent mentioning about it meaning more to our fans, I'm not even going to disagree because I, I know how the Liverpool fan base kind of stay. Obviously, I, I don't agree with that in, in that kind of sense. Uh, to me, you win five Premier League titles or whatever it is that Pep Guardiola's won, uh, to me, that, that that means more to me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, I'm not going to use the old financial thing and blah, blah, blah. I know people want to use it. And I'm, again, I'm not here and I'm not going to be the one to tell anybody what they should and shouldn't do in that kind of regard. Do whatever you want, feel however you want, speak your truth. <laughs> Big up ends in Savage because you already know um, what, what that is. But yeah, speak your truth, man, Where, however you feel. For me, I just don't really use that. We've watched the, We've watched Manchester City throughout this period of time. We've seen how they played. We know they've got the best manager in world football at this current moment in time. And listen, we've done well to battle with them. I have to give Liverpool props for that. We've done very, very well to battle with Manchester City, but I can't sit here and just pretend like, you know, Manchester City, uh, you know, it's only just because of that. Obviously, we'll never know in terms of if, you know, this whole financial thing and the charges that they've got and stuff like that. Listen, that's for the financial experts. I'll let them kind of divvy that up themselves. I'm not a financial expert and I don't really care to be honest. I'm only here to talk about the football. And they've played some of the best football I've ever seen, you know, in the Premier League, let alone you know, some of the players that they've got and things like that, you know. And ultimately, it's not even like, I've said this before, it's not like they're going around, people say, oh, yeah, but they just go around and they sign this, and they do. <laughs> Listen, Manchester City have got more money, much more money than most, you know, kind of thing. So, of course, they do have that advantage. I will definitely agree with that. But ultimately, you still need to do something with that money. We've seen Manchester United spend money. We've seen Chelsea recently spend money doesn't mean anything. Nottingham Forest, spend money, doesn't mean anything. West Ham, spend money. They won a trophy, to be fair, so it meant something in that kind of sense. But do you know what I mean? Like, it's not just about the spending of money. And I think that's what bugs me more than anything else when I hear people speak about it, is that, yes, I agree, of course. Listen, until the charges are sorted out and patterned up and we know what's going on, Right now, it's, um, you know, innocent until proven guilty for Manchester City. I don't really care either way, to be honest, but it's innocent until proven guilty. But ultimately, bro, they still got to sign these players. And, you, you know, what I mean, it's not it's not their fault that you've not you as a team, whichever club it is, that not necessarily Liverpool, it's not their fault that they've signed a player who's helped them towards their goal. Do you know what I mean? Because ultimately, everyone's trying to do the same thing. It, of course, they're going to be able to sign better players than the bottom club, but Liverpool are able to sign better players than than some of these other clubs or most of these other clubs. It's not like we can't, you know what I mean? We just choose not to in certain cases, you know, and we and we think, nah, you know, why why would we do that? Why would we spend that much on Jude Bellingham? We could have bought Jude Bellingham. We were just about to sign Kai Sado as well. These are big, big, big money signings, you know, that we could have signed. That wouldn't have guaranteed us anything, though. That wouldn't have meant anything. Not to say that we couldn't have won with them, but that doesn't mean, oh, yeah, because we signed Caicedo or because we signed Drew Bellingham, yeah, Liverpool are just going to... No, it doesn't work like that. You need the best managers to be able to do these things. You need to have a team who's able to, first of all, buy into everything, but you need the manager who's going to be there to be able to say, all right, cool, let's get, you know, let's get this shit cracking. So, yeah, for me, like I said, I'm not here to... I, I don't, Like I said, I don't really care. I'm just here for the football. Um, I'm only here to talk about football tactics and stats and whatever, what, what, what have you. But yeah, when we start using the money thing and then it's like, bro, we li I just watched them win. Like, I, I, that's not going to be erased from my memory. I can't just use the, the <laughs> I can't just use uh, and big up. I'm laughing because uh, I see ends obviously uses it um, in his streams and stuff. But I can't just go men in black and and you and use the thing to to kind of just erase my memory. I can't do that. I, I watch them. I've seen Pep Guardiola for the last however many years since Barcelona days. I've seen it. So for me to then be like, oh yeah, what well, I, I can't really do that. Do you know? My mind don't really work like that. 
kind of thing. And at times I do think it is a little bit saltiness because the reality is when you look at these kind of situations, however anybody's done it, there's no right way. Uh, this Liverpool right way thing, that's a myth. That That's that's not a real thing. You, you know what I mean? That bugs me more than anything. That's probably the only thing I'll say upon that. Everything else, I'm like, listen, feel how you want to feel. But the right way, that's a myth. I'm not even trying to hear any of that kind of stuff because you would love to have been in their position. You would love it. Who who doesn't? So I, I'm trying to understand, you know, what people are saying. So you don't want to win five Premier League titles in the last however many years, in six years or whatever it is. You don't want that. Okay, fair enough then. You, you'd you rather slug it out and do, of course you would. Obviously, you want to do it without cheating. And if Manchester City have been found cheating, then we deal with it, you know, then. But still, I still look at it and be like, I mean, they were still able to get some of these players and turn them into the world-class players. Most of the players that they've signed, they ain't even world-class. Oh, sorry, weren't even world-class before they signed them. Pep Guardiola changed that. He made them into those world-class players. So, yeah, that's my two cents on that. But we're here to obviously talk about the football in itself. And it's funny because Haaland, you know, I saw this, Haaland obviously replied. Again, you can check it out. It was on Sky Sports. Um, this is Haaland's response. Uh, if he wants to say that, okay, I've been here one year and I've won the treble and it's quite a nice feeling. I don't think he knows exactly this feeling. Uh, Diaz as well. A treble is a feeling that you only know how it feels when you actually do it. It's pretty certain between us, between our fans, how much it meant for all of us. And that is the sad part about all of this is that the fans almost get, like, like the Manchester City fans anyway, they almost get forgotten. Remember, it's not their fault. I know rivalry, bants, all of that. I get it, man. I fully, fully get it. And I'm kind of here for it, to be honest. It's kind of funny seeing Manchester City fans trying to get themselves out of certain conversations and things like that because it's like, well, what can you realistically say? <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got charges hanging over your head, bro. Like, you can't just be... You, you can't just negate that or try and negate that. Unfortunately, you are in a position whereby you do need to, you know, speak on it in, in to some degree. Do you, you know what I mean? But ultimately, listen, that's their problem anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll let Manchester City fans fight that battle, you know, um, uh, themselves, to be honest with you. But, you know, Klopp versus Pep. As I said, it's the last dance um, between the two managers um, in the Premier League era. That, I mean, unless Klopp's going to turn around and come back or, you know, uh, he's going to say, no, nope, I'm not cancelling. I mean, I'm cancelling my um, retirement plan. I'm going to stay. Um, but it's, it's been a great battle, man. It's actually been a really, really good battle. I have to admit, I can't even lie to you. Uh, you got here the head-to-head -head record of both teams in the Premier League since Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola have been here. Um, you can see. Uh, Manchester City with six wins, Liverpool with eight, and there's been seven draws within this time. Manchester City have obviously scored more goals by five um, than Liverpool. I mean, they've had some really big wins in that time as well. I remember a 4-1 defeat I think the year that we won the Premier League. I think there was another one, like a 5-0, 5-1 five five or something like that. Was it 4-1 or 5-1? Um, I think that's the one. Did Mane get sent off? I, think, I can't remember if that was the same one, but obviously we've beaten them in Champions Leagues and, you know, things like that this has been obviously their league positions and you can see like they've been battling man they've been battling they really since 16 17 they really really have been battling the um each other and they've been the kind of they've been the staple that's how i'll put it they've been like the staple for premier league football you know you come to the premier league you got these two to do with i don't care who you are <clears throat> i don't care <clears throat> what manager jose Mourinho, who was here during this time uh louis van how who's been here during this time antonio conte who's been it like Ancelotti, you know, top, top managers have come here. These two are the ones you have to get past. You know what I mean? These two, like, that. this is the street fighter, the final boss. These are the final bosses that you have to kind of get past. And obviously, here's their trophy hall. Um, Manchester City is obviously absolutely massive. <laughs> um, yeah, and Liverpool's one, obviously, of course, down there at the bottom. Uh, I'm not even going to count it. You guys already know um, what it is in regards to, in regards to these two. But Listen, man, they've been great managers, man. I don't care. Both Klopp and Pep. Uh, you know me, I've got my beef. Not my beef, but you know my feelings on Jurgen Klopp. And I state that all the time. And I'm not really afraid to state it either. But those two have been the two best um, during this period of time. So there's, you know, there, there's not really much more you can realistically say. So, you know, when we look to the game, um, when I'm looking at Manchester City, there was a couple of players that I looked at um, and I thought, where the threats might potentially come from. Obviously, you got this guy here. Sniper. Shooter. 
you know what I'm saying? Real bad man. <laughs> you feel me? And that's obviously Phil Foden. Excellent, 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 excellent player. He is a dope player. You really can't say, you know, much more than that. Look at his, you know, this season, 40 appearances, 18 goals, 10 assists. Um, minutes per goal involvement, 112.5. Uh, shots and chances created. But it's with me, it's not even that. Sometimes look beyond even the stats. I mean, the stats are good, by the way. Like, if that's your thing and you want to just base it on that, the stats are there for you. Do you know what I mean? I mean, to have scored, you know, goals and assists, because that's what we're doing now. Even though I don't really care. But I don't really care about... I like, I would always look at them as single. I'd be like, okay, in 40 games, you got 10 assists. All right, I'm saying no more. That's pretty decent. And then he got 18 goals in all competitions. I'd be like, okay, that's real decent, you know, for someone like Phil Foden. But it's been his impact and it's been, you know, the way he's been able to dominate in certain games, especially when Kevin De Bruyne was out injured, you know, during that period of time, he was becoming more of a focal point. And, you know, the performances that he was putting in in some games, I remember um, me and Enns did a... Um, uh, we did a both sides of the coin. And by the way, I will be bringing that back soon. But when we did a both sides of the coin, and I think it was Man City versus Newcastle earlier on in the season, Bowden was on, he was on something. He was definitely on something, man. And I think he's going to be, he's going to be an area where we just need to be able to focus and we just need to, you know, watch, you know, watch that kind of space. And then of course, obviously this, 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 this guy, this guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this guy right here, Kevin De Bruyne, probably, alongside in my opinion Virgil and Mo Salah best player in the Premier League um and you could argue he's probably the best but wh whatever side of the fence you sit on he's the best midfielder that's all I know guaranteed and it's not even close to the next uh, maybe Rodri actually maybe Rodri but he is the one that you're looking at and you're like all right, all right, all right. Fairs, fairs, fairs. You know, what I mean? you got Kevin De Bruyne. No one, no one can really say anything to Kevin De Bruyne. Do you know what I mean? He's not. He's one of those players. You're just like, ah, right, okay, cool, yeah, whatever. Like, it's just one of those things. Been injured for half the season. Got 13 appearances, 12 assists, and two goals. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not even gonna sit here and be like, oh, he's got 14 goals and assists. I don't care. He's got 12 assists. He's got 12 assists in 13 games. Like, listen, man, this, this guy is a. Uh, yeah, he's too dumb. He's too dumb. And he's definitely going to be a player that Liverpool are going to need to watch. I know, you know, Pep Guardiola is going to rely upon him in a game like this. He's played in this game many times. He's played at Anfield many times. He understands this kind of fixture. He understands the magnitude of this kind of fixture. He's going to be one of the, you know, the one of the players that Pep Guardiola is really, really going to like try and rely upon in this type of game with the atmosphere, Liverpool, more fans in the stadium. It's going to be crazy. And alongside another player I didn't put him up there, but um, was Rodri as well. He's another player. You know, he's, you know, the best defensive midfielder in the world, you know, bar none. And I think that even with, with Rodri, you also got, he doesn't score a lot, but he scores important goals. So he's someone you just got to be wary of, you know, and just his whole game, you know, is just geared to games like this. So it's, again, this these are going to be three players that I think, you know, uh, Liverpool really going to have to just make sure that they don't get a foothold and they're not, they're not able to imprint, you know, their kind of thing on the game. And I think that, you know, Liverpool should be fine. They should be fine. But when we're looking at Liverpool, Darwin Nunes, um, it's a bit of sweet this one, isn't it? But yep, yeah, listen, he's been in very, very good form of late. Um, getting a lot of goals, getting a lot of assists. Um, in the last, um, like in the last like few games and stuff like that. This season, he's obviously got played thirty nine times, scored sixteen goals and eleven assists. I believe that's correct. Um, let me know in the, in the comments. I might be, I might be a little bit um wrong. This is obviously his form in the last few games. <clears throat> in the last 10 games, he has got eight goals and three assists. There's only been two games in that time where he hasn't scored or assisted in those games. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's in good form right now. He's definitely in good form right now. Obviously, got his two goals against Sparta Pra um, in, the, um, in the Europa League first leg. Two fantastic goals as well. I have to big, um, have to big him up in that regard. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see Again, what his imprint is going to be like in this kind of game. Can Liverpool really utilise his strengths in this kind of match? Because ultimately, they're going to need it. As we know, Virgil van Dijk being the captain, you know, he's going to be vitally important for Liverpool in this kind of game. Especially because, obviously, again, at the time of doing this um, video, I don't know the situation with Canate. I know I've heard it's 
it's not as bad as we think and etc etc but uh, i don't know but either way regardless whether Kanate is there or not he is the man that you know is really going to help us out uh, especially up against um erling Haaland, which he's had good games against as well so definitely going to wait for that one kelleher obviously he's going to be stepping in for allison barring any injury issues He's been great these last few games since he stepped in really for Allison. There was obviously question marks over him. Um, we didn't really know, yo, is he going to be the guy? Is he uh, like we've got him in goal, but he's been really, really good. He's my man of the match against Sparta Pra. So, yeah. And then, of course, the king. The king, you know, I can't do a video about a king. You know, I can't do a video about a king. Don't be silly. Don't, 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 don't be silly, man. Don't be silly, man. This is the, I, I, what do I even need to say on this guy? He's, he's the king. I'll, I'll leave it there. He is, he's literally the king. This is obviously Salah versus Foden um, in the Premier League. Um, head to head, 15 goals, nine assists, 11 goals, seven assists. Um, yeah, those two are going to be, if they if Salah obviously plays, and if Foden plays, who knows? That might do something a bit weird, but if they both play, going to be vitally important um, for both teams. So, yeah, man, I think we just have to wait and see um, and then, of course, take things from there. Now, I think let's take a look. I think we should... Well, I'll show you this actually quickly before we go on to that. This is obviously the goals and assists this season. Um, there's quite a few Manchester City players and there's quite a few Liverpool players <coughs> Excuse me, who are in this top 10 list. So we've got Erling Haaland at the top there, as we would kind of expect. 35 goals and assists, if we're going to be doing that. Um, 29 for Bakaya Saka, 28 for Mohamed Salah. Um, those two are really, really close. 28 for Ollie Watkins, 28 for Phil Foden, 27 for Darwin Nunes, 27 for Julian Alvarez as well. So, yeah, these two teams, again, they're showing that, you know, they're the, they're the top two. They're the top two. And they've got the players to kind of prove it. You know, one thing, and I might do a video separately on this, um, this goals and assists thing, man. Uh, like, obviously, now, because the game... And the way people see the game, it's all about goal contributions and, you know, and it is really about from how people, how I, how I perceive people see the game these days is, yes, goals and assists, goals and assists, goals and assists. It's so crazy to me because it's almost like because we're so focused on goals and assists, like I, I don't even know how much, how many assists Erling Haaland, let me even check how many assists Erling Haaland even has this season. You've got six, you've got six assists, five in the Premier League, like. <laughs> and 18 goals like when i think of these kind of things like sometimes because we place so much importance upon this i don't feel like enough people are actually just watching the games like they're not really watching the game now because now it's well if i didn't see the game or whatever oh there's such and such score all right cool boom 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 we just go from there or oh i didn't see the game but he got another goal today like prime example and this isn't me trying to slander him because he probably is a really good striker i haven't watched sporting enough i've maybe watched two or three games i want to say three yeah three games i've watched of sporting all season and we're in march right about now but people talk about giriakis you know um Ex-Coventry player, obviously, he's moved to Sporting Lisbon on absolute fire this season. But he, again, like I said, I, I'm just using him as an example. If you don't watch it and all you see when you go on sofa score or all these other places is, oh, he scored again. Okay, cool. He scored. He scored again. He scored again. He scored again. You'll just be like, yeah, that's the strike I want. Blah, blah, blah. He's doing this. He's doing that. And then that two minute flipping comp that these clowns do on Twitter, all of a sudden now it's like, oh, my days, this is the guy. Now, I'm not saying he isn't the guy, but we've seen with a lot of people that just because you see them potentially for that team doing well, that's not going to necessarily translate to your team. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And I feel like in this day and age, it is really just about stats, 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 stats. And then we're not really watching the games. We're not really focused on what teams and players are actually really doing. How does that translate to, you know, what you're trying to do? It's all mad. It's it, Honestly, it's all mad, man. But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. I think it is just one of those kind of things. And I think that's just the kind of era of football that we've unfortunately gotten ourselves into. But, alas, let's take a look at ba -dum -ba -dum, my lineup for the game and the team that I would like to go with. Okay, let's get this up. Yep. This should be perfect on your screens now. Yeah, perfect. So you can see I've already populated three of the players already. Keller, as we know, Van Dyke, as we know. And I feel like Endo is, is kind of a guaranteed starter barring any injury issues. So let's go to the other positions. Now, 
again, like I said, I'm doing this on Friday. So I'm going to choose Kanate. But again, let's, of course, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll wait and see on that. But I'm going to go with Kanate alongside Virgil van Dijk. I think that partnership, obviously, has been it's done really, really well this season. Um, and I think hopefully in this game, it can, of course, help us out. Fullback areas. Robbo, <clears throat> obviously, who's our first choice left back. Yeah, he was poor against Sparta. <laughs> he, he really was bad. He really was bad. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Robbo. I mean, I'm going to go with Gomez, sorry. I'm going to go with Gomez in that position. I think Liverpool will will need Gomez in this kind of position for this type of game. Especially if you've got Phil Foden cutting in onto obviously his left foot. Gomez, I'm hoping, will just be a lot more comfortable in that kind of in that kind of position. Um, of course, we ain't got no Trent Alexander Arnold, so that means that Bradley would have to go um over there. And and to be honest, the fact that I'm even putting Bradley in the team, that's a big up to Bradley. You know what I mean? Because who like two, three months ago, man ain't putting Bradley into the Bradley. Forget all of that. Robbo left back. Gomez right back if we have no Trent or Trent, of course, if he was there kind of thing. But now you're saying, no, nah, Bradley can go in there. Obviously, got the own goal um, against Sparta Pra. Yeah. And and he was a little bit, I don't know, like he, he just seemed a little bit off it. But the whole, to be honest, the whole defence was crap um, against Sparta Pra, in my personal opinion. So, you know, I guess it was, I'm hoping it was just one of those kind of things um, personally. But I, I, I would prefer to go with this. I know most people might just go Robbo. And again, please let me know in the comment section. You probably would go Robbo. I, and I hear it. I'm not disagreeing with that. He is our first choice left back. But I would just want a bit more solidity um, in that kind of regards. Um, so, yeah, I would much prefer to go to go Joe Gomez in that position. Endo, obviously, already there. Uh, midfield positions. This one was kind of interesting because it really just depends. I don't know. Does Zobo slide start this game? Like McAllister played, I'm just trying to figure out the Zobos last start. Okay, you know what? I'll do this. Put McAllister there anyway, for now. Um, but the Zobos last start this game. This is the bit I don't really know. He looks kind of rusty when he's kind of come on as well. I don't really know, man. I know he got a goal in that the other day, but it's not like he played well um, in the game. I and mean, he hasn't played well when he's come on in the, the game before that either. Uh if he doesn't go there, the only other option really is going to be Bobby Clark. Do I trust Clark in this kind of game? Not really, you know, not even. I, I, that's not to say Clock doesn't. Clock might be thinking, yeah, no, Clark's going to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? He might just go with that midfield. Um, Elliot, obviously, he already played. Do I, I don't really see Elliot starting this game. I feel like with this kind of game, bring Elliot off the bench anyway. Um, this one's a toughie, man. This one's a toughie. Um, McAllister has been in good form as well, so he would go in regardless, as I mentioned before. Does he go with Clark? I, I, honestly, I don't know, because I don't know if he's going to go with Clark. We'll just say, Zobos, like, you're going to start this game and then come off for Bobby Clark. But do you bring Bobby Clark on? You know what? <clears throat> I think... I think... Let me have, let me take a look. Did I, How many... Um, how many... Minutes did Bobby Clark? He didn't start, but he came on. I'll go Bobby Clark. I'm gonna go Clark. I'm gonna go Clark. I'm gonna go Clark. Uh, what? Why can't you just show me the two? Yeah, I'm gonna go Clark <clears throat> to start the game. It's at Anfield. He might just trust him more in that kind of sense with the home crowd and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Clark. I'm going to go with Clark. But could be subject to change as we go through the rest of this. All right, up top. Um, hmm. I think Diaz plays. I know he's played a lot of football, but I think Diaz will play. He's going to play Salah, man. I, I don't know why I'm even contemplating, even thinking about it, but he's playing Salah. Um, and then Darwin, Darwin Nunes, of course, uh, meaning that Cody Gappa will obviously drop to the bench. And then you've still got Harvey Elliott, Sabozalai on the bench. Okay, cool. Harvey Elliott, Cody Gappo, and Dominic Sabozalai on the bench. That's all right, no? What do you guys think? Let me know, obviously, of course, in the, in the comment section. That's probably the team I would go with. So, obviously, Keller in goal, Gomez, left back. 
Bradley right back, Van Dijk, Canate. Um, then you've still got Endo, Clark and McAllister in the midfield. And then Diaz, Nunes, Salah. Some people would argue that that's our best front three. I don't actually think so. I think Jota's in there regardless. So take out who? Take out whichever two that you want to take out. That's up to you. I don't really care. But Jota's definitely in that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm still just, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Um, but yeah, that, that's, you know, I'll, I'll stand on that. I'll stand on that. that. That's the team that I would, um, that I would go with for this game. Again, like I said, I don't know if any injury concerns, anything gets picked up. Then, of course, that it would change my mind. But right now, Speaking of as of today, I would probably go with, yeah, Bobby Clark in that midfield. He's really the only one I'm thinking about is Bobby Clark. Gapo has to drop to the bench. He's, he's just been, yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I gave him, I changed his score to a 6.5 in the previous game. Um, so, yeah, apologies for that. Um, but, yeah, that's the lineup that I would... Um, that I would go with. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Who would you change from this lineup? Um, it would be very interesting to know what you guys think um, in that kind of regards. But yeah, you know, we've come, we've come to the end. Uh, my prediction for the game. I said this on Enzo's channel the other day and I still believe it. I, I can't pick. So I'm just going to say 2-2. Two, two. I'm just going to say 2-2. Two, two. Fuck it. I know it's 1-1 one, one at their place. I'm just going to say 2-2. Two, two. I think it'll be a it'll be that type of game. I think it'll be that type of game. Um so yeah, I'm going to go 2-2 two, two for this game. Again, let me know your predictions in the comment section below. But big game, man. Big big game. Um Liverpool versus Manchester City. It is really going to be an interesting one, man. I, I can't wait for it, um, to be honest with you. Um, it was so intriguing to see. Um, maybe this is the confirmation I need to really believe in Liverpool this season. You know, because I've still got my doubts. But maybe this is the confirmation that I need to get that victory against Manchester City, you know, and then say, all right, say no more. I, I, I back them to do it. Um, but of course, if Manchester City do it, then we already know the vibes. You know what I mean? You know the vibes, you know the tyres. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see, guys. But please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. That is my match preview done and dusted. Make sure you smash that like. Make sure you share and subscribe to the damn channel. Please, we are on the road to 1,500 subscribers. So please, please, please make sure you're smashing that subscribe button. I'm G. Let's hope Liverpool get that victory we'll be there do you care though we'll be there trust me we will be there peace